Hello and welcome. I'm Nathan42 and in this episode I'm going to be talking about the E3D clone that I have installed on my Anet A8. I recently damaged the tip of my printer. It got clogged because I was putting through the uh, the wood filament. So what I had to do was I had to either declog the tube, uh, which I didn't really know how to do. I tried heating it up, I tried cooling it down, trying to poke stuff into it. It wasn't having any of it. And then when I tried to undo it, the thread broke on the uh, on the hot end uh, to try and t when I was trying to take it off and stuff. So that became a bit more of a ball ache. And in the end, I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna buy. A new hot end. So uh, what I did was I bought another one of the exact same hot end and what I had in mind was the fact that I, what I could do is I could put that into this printer, I could print the parts that I need from this printer to then upgrade this printer to the e, uh, E3D hot end. I printed out the carriage and everything else for it. Uh, I bought a mount for the motor to go on top of the frame which is pretty good. And the hot end actually came with its own little Teflon tube or whatever, so I, I had that anyway. This was a clone. I got the, I picked up the clone for about 14 pounds, I believe, on Amazon, which is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. It's very cheap compared to the original. But what I do want to do is I want to go back at some point and get the original. What I was gonna do then is with the old hot end, the one that I had inside that printer, I'm gonna put that into the Vector 3 3D printer behind me uh, and then I can renew that one, get it all back up to scratch, get it printing properly, and hopefully make it 10 times better than it was. I mean, obviously that's, that's quite a big ask. That's quite a lot to expect from such a small, simple, you know, build your own printer. But hopefully we can get the, the level of quality in that printer up to scratch uh, and back to the way it should be. And when I switched that printer on, I tried it out before even doing anything. I just re-leveled the bed um, with a bit of paper and printed a cube. And it just printed perfectly. The filament has not has been in there for uh, probably about four or five months now. I've not touched it since I bought the Anet A8. Literally, haven't printed a single thing on it. But it printed perfectly really well really well and i'm really surprised they actually did that i'm quite happy with that i'm quite happy with how this printer has actually held up over time um because i was really i was really not expecting it to actually come out okay i was expecting like a big blob or some some crap like that or like string in or like bad sides and stuff like that but no it came out okay now some things to mention before you go ahead and get a e3d hot end to install is make sure you print the parts that you do need before you get it. You need, you're gonna need something to hold it, which I printed, I printed that in PLA, and although that's probably not the greatest of ideas, it is working fine, so I'm not too bothered about the fact that it might melt at the moment. I will, in the future, probably go back over that with uh, ABS uh, and print something off for it, so that it can just be a bit stronger. And also, like, ABS is technically, like, like it's usually a bit more durable anyway, but I, I think at the moment it's gonna be fine the way it is. Um, it seems to be working perfectly fine. I had to print something off for the bed leveling sensor because the bed leveling sensor didn't have a spot on there. I would have had nowhere to actually uh, put the, the Z-axis end stop and that would have just slammed into the bed. So what I did was I printed off something that was supposed to hold the fan and the bed leveling sensor uh, and then put that underneath where the fan mounts on the current bracket that I have and that held the bed leveling sensor as well. So it kind of, I merged two different designs together. You can kind of do that with 3D printing as well, uh, which is very useful. I printed that on that printer. It didn't come out perfect, but it came out in a workable enough uh, way that I am actually currently using it now and have been for probably about three, uh, two to three weeks. Um, as you've probably noticed in my videos, uh, it, it, I've had this little update for it for a couple of weeks now and it is, it is going okay. One other thing that I did was I printed a new belt holder for the uh, x-axis or this one here. Um, and what I wanted to do with that was uh, make it so I could tense the belt a little bit more before I could put it through. Uh, I don't think I have enough belt left in order to make a belt tensioner, uh, belt tensioner for that axis so hopefully doing this should actually fix that issue for me. 
uh, and I want to do the same thing for underneath the uh, the Y axis as well because this one will have the um, it just has a uh, two bits of plastic which are pushed up underneath the bed at the moment and it's just cl clamping it in that way it would be good to have it so it kind of wraps around and kind of pushes in with the teeth and stuff I think that would probably be a better way to do it or maybe if I can lower it down a little bit first with two more little bits of plastic and then grab them there so that it's more level so it doesn't seem to kind of like bulge up to the bed and then back I think that would make the X carriage move a bit smoother and potentially will save a bit of the issues with the print since I did that upgrade uh, there doesn't seem to be jolty lines on one side of the print I'm not sure if maybe that is to do with the uh, Z rods or not what I do want to do is I've seen some printers with the bearings at the top of the rods up here I don't know if you can see that or not but up there, that usually you have like a bearing and then it's been held in place by the other rod. I want to do that uh, because with that you can uh, hold the bar straight but also allow it to spin quite freely. So yeah, compared to how it used to be, it is definitely a lot better. In conclusion, I think it's a very good update. I think it does help with the quality of the print by removing the weight from the head. Uh, I think that is a very good thing to try and do uh, if you are looking to upgrade your prints and stuff like that. Uh, I like the uh, usability of this head, it means you don't have to keep taking the fan off, recalibrating it because your uh, Z sensor is actually connected to the fan uh, and you don't have to continuously reattach that back onto the cartridge and then recalibrate the bed leveling sensor all the time. It's very nice to not have to worry about that. I do still have to readjust the bed leveling sensor from time to time. I'm not sure if maybe in the original uh, E3D there is actually a bit that goes straight down into the bottom bit and that is what actually just makes it work so smooth and then you don't have to chip do you, you don't have to mess about with the, the teflon tube or whatever it is all the time that would be great and that is what i'm hoping for when i buy the e3d tube anyway that is about it for this time don't forget to subscribe let me know what you think follow me on twitter that's at nifl42 and thanks for watching